Hello, I'm back today with another video in my Halloween uh, DIY faux leather earring series. Uh, in my last video, I made these super cute ghosts. I made them in several colors, glitter, uh, purple. I did kind of a glitter, glitter light blue. All of them have this double layer. If you haven't checked out that video, I will link it below so you can find it. Uh, today is my second video and we are going to be making these really cute skulls. You know, these are cute for Halloween, but some of these that I show you, I think would be cute at any time of year. So the ones I'm going to show you today are made with this uh, Hobby Lobby cork. It's this really thin cork I've been using quite a bit. Um, I can't remember if I've done a video about this cork or not, uh, but I turn it into double-sided cork using my heat and bond. If you watch my videos, you see me using that quite a bit. Um, but I do want to show you some really fun versions of this earring. Okay, so I thought this was a really cute one. This is a uh, blue kind of a camo uh, looking cork, uh, super cute. I'll link to all of my corks uh, too. That's from one of my favorite cork vendors uh, on Etsy. And then I love this one with the um, cheetah print. I think that's super cute as well. Uh, sometimes with the cork, uh, it does get a little harder down by the teeth. I'm trying to kind of show you uh, by the teeth, but I'm trying to show you the skull kind of towards the bottom here. I did have to trim with my scissors. I still think it looks really cute. It wasn't too hard at all. And I think the jaggedy edges around the eyes are actually really cute considering that they are schools. It's not about like these perfect lines. Um, I have some really fun colored florals. I did these schools in uh, that I think are really fun. Again, this is why I think they're not necessarily just for Halloween. Um, this is that double-sided faux leather that I showed you when I did my ghost. Um, and I'll kind of pull this close so you can see. This actually did cut really well. Um, I did have to go into my scissors at the bottom a little uh, because it is double-sided and these are more intricate cuts. Uh, but I still think they turned out really cute. Here's another kind of a fun... Um, cork floral with like a blue and burgundy. These are great for theme parties too, uh, biker bashes or things like that where you want to wear the skulls. Uh, this just makes a really great earring for that. I love the camo. Camo is always such a popular uh, pattern on anything I make uh, and so I always do everything in a camo. I think this next pair is one of my favorites. Um, and it's this blue, it's a damask pattern. You can't really tell when it's cut into a skull uh, what the pattern of the faux leather is. But this is really, uh, the last one I show you is gonna be my favorite. Uh, this one's probably my second favorite, uh, just because I think this is such a cute pattern on the earrings and I think these would be great uh, for any day wear. A lot of these earrings just have a really simple uh, back that's a white color and so I didn't do a lot of these double-sided. Um, I did do the ones uh, that I'm gonna show you today double-sided just because I want to show you that with this Hobby Lobby cork. This is another really cute material I'm using. This is a double-sided material too from Amazon. And so I'm gonna link to that. Uh, and you see, I make double-sided myself all the time myself with the heat and bond material that I'm gonna show you today. But it sure is nice when you find a nice material that comes uh, double-sided already, like this one did. This one came in a kit and there are several sheets of double-sided glitter. I actually think this turns out really cute because look at how it cut around the eyes and you can kind of see that white in there kind of uh, related, I think, to the fact that it's double-sided. I actually think that is such a great effect uh, for the fact that these are uh, skeleton earrings. I think the eyes and the nose look awesome. Okay, so today in the video, I'm gonna show you how to make these. And I'm really excited because we are gonna use this Hobby Lobby Thin Cork. So many of you have access to a Hobby Lobby store and this is great priced faux leather cork that I love to use. So why don't we go ahead and dig in and we'll get started. Okay, so first I do wanna show you the material that I'm using today. Um, I am using this black cork. Uh, from Hobby Lobby. So you can kind of see it is a super, 
super thin cork. Now, one of the things about cork is when it's really thick, when you want to put it back to back so both sides look good, you end up with a really thick earring. So there's something really nice about a super thin cork. And I've got all kinds of colors. This was the one I was gonna do for 4th of July. It never happened. Um, this was the one I was gonna do for fall. I still might. I had some fun ideas with this one. Um, this is fun because everybody always loves cheetah cork. Um, this is funny because I've like debated forever whether this is orange or red. And when I looked on the website uh, probably a month or so ago, I think it said red, but it doesn't look red to me. And then I've got this floral one as well. And so I've been playing with these uh, and I have a really fun big flower one that I've used on a bunch of like giant earrings. And I just have had really good luck with it. So I've been wanting to do this video for quite a while on this cork. And uh, when I decided that I wanted to talk about the school earrings today, I was trying to decide which one I was actually, which earring I was actually gonna make because I always try to make sure my video, I'm teaching something different for people who watch them all. I like to just try and do different things. So there's something kind of new uh, in each video. It's not the same old, same old. And so I decided when I was going through all my earrings that I made of these schools that this is a perfect one because I haven't used my Hobby Lobby uh, material yet. And I can kind of take you through that process and how I prepared these and um, how I cut them. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into a blank screen, uh, a blank canvas on Cricut Design Space. Okay, so I am in a blank canvas, and the first thing I need to do is add my school SVG file. So I'm going to come over to the left-hand side. I have already uploaded that file, obviously, because I made a lot of these earrings. If you've uh, if you've downloaded that, if you purchased that file, I'll link to it below. You've saved it to your computer. This is where you come to upload it. Um, I've already done that, so now it's in my images, and so I'm just going to click on my images icon over here on the left. And uh, when I bring this up, what I want to see is anything that I've uploaded. So if, if this happens, I just click on this again and click on it again, and I get this menu. Um, and once I come here, I want to look at my ownership. So you've got quite a laundry list of different things on this menu, but I care about ownership, and so I click on the plus button, or not button, but icon here next to ownership, and then I click in the box that says uploaded because I want to see what I've uploaded. And now I just need to scroll down to find that skull. Um, I made it a while, I've made these a while back. I uploaded them a while back. So I've got to work my way down to them. Let's see here. This is a really great file. I'll show you right here. It comes with several different um, things. The bats is one of the ones I'm gonna use. I didn't use this pumpkin because he was a little scary. I think he's fun for some things, but I didn't use him for my earrings. Um, and that ghost is cute, but I wanted a rounder ghost, so I didn't use that. But those are all part of the same uh, file set. It's a really great price. And the school is part of that file set too. So I click on it, I get the, re the green box around it. And then I just need to click on insert images. And that will bring that skull into my mat. It brings it in really large. I gotta scroll down here and kind of find it. I'm gonna pull it closer to the top. It comes in huge, like eight inches tall or whatever. Um, and that's uh, too big for earrings. And so we're gonna resize that. I'm gonna just take it down to two inches. So to do that, while it's selected, so my image, I've clicked on it, and you can tell that because the blue box is around it. So while it's selected with that blue box, I can just come up here into the height field and I can change the height. I'm just gonna put a two in here because these are in inches. And so I put a two and I press enter and it now resizes my earring for me. Now it automatically kept the ratio between height and width because this lock button is on. So if I click that and, and it's unlocked and you kind of see the opening of the lock, that would now mean that as I change the height, the width wouldn't change with it. Uh, almost always when we're changing these, we leave this locked so that the proportions stay the same. The only time, oops, I'm trying to lock it back up. There we go, now we see it's closed. The only time that's different is when I'm doing teardrops and sometimes I want the back layer to be wider so it shows on the sides and not just the bottom. So sometimes I'm modifying uh, my width and height a little bit differently, uh, non-proportionally to what they come in at. Okay, so that, this is like the easiest earring you can make because it's ready to go. I need to duplicate it. I do need another one. 
So we're gonna go ahead and hit the duplicate button and we are ready. So we're gonna click over here on make it. Um, we can see our mat here. Uh, I don't really have any changes to make. It's a symmetrical shape, so I don't need to like uh, do anything different here. I mean, I could say mirror. I always say if you put the good side down, you should do mirror. The only thing I'll say about that is we're gonna create a double-sided cork, so both sides are good, but uh, I don't know. I hit mirror a lot just as a good matter of practice. And then we're gonna hit the continue button. All right, then the next thing we're gonna need to do is select the material. Um, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and we're gonna browse materials together. Uh, some of you may have favorites saved. I'll show you when we look at that, how you can make things just appear here. These are the things I use all the time and I love that they're right here. I don't need to go look for them. Um, yeah, I cut a lot of metallic leather or a lot of things that are, I use a setting of metallic leather. It may not even be metallic leather. I use a setting a lot because it's a really thick cut. It's thicker than a genuine uh, cut. And so I use it if I have a thicker material than a normal genuine leather. I may go, I may lean into this metallic. So I use it quite a bit. I use shimmered leather the most. And then I use a uh, genuine leather as well. Um, but let's go ahead, if you don't have favorite set, let's browse all materials. And when I come in here, I just like to look at leather. So I click on the drop down box of all categories and I just select, select leather. And your menu will look a little bit different if you're using the Cricut Air, Explorer Air, uh, because some of these options are only available on the Cricut Maker. So you're only gonna see tooling leather on the Maker. Uh, you're going to see garment leather on the Maker. The rest of them, I believe, uh, from my memory, I believe that you have the rest of these. I, I, I know I had the rest of those when I had my, uh, when I just used my Cricut Air. Um, and so when you look at the choices you have, uh, we definitely don't want to have to change blades to a deep cut blade. And you saw how thin this material is. So it's not like you need a deep cut blade. You can even see through this cork, it's so thin. And uh, now once we do back to back, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look that thin. Um, and so I think you, you could really uh, debate between shimmered leather, uh, one mm, because remember if we do adhesive in the middle and we do it back to back, you're gonna be, oops, you're gonna be at about this thickness. Um, trying to get it to where it's kind of, boy, the lighting is not great. Um, trying to get it to you to see. I think it's still a little skinnier than what I would do as a shimmered uh, leather. It's borderline faux leather paper thin. Even, even if you double that up, it is borderline uh, paper thin, in my opinion. That said, I'm really bad about my go-to here. I'm going with shimmered leather. I'm just 90% sure that's what I would have cut when I did these and this cut turned out really well. Um, so it, it's always my go-to uh, is the shimmered leather. It might be a little deep and press a little hard, uh, but if it doesn't work out, then we can come back and run it on the thinner cut with the paper thin. So we're gonna go with the shimmered leather and we're gonna click done and um, we don't need to do anything different with our blade. We can leave in the fine tip and we're just gonna leave that pressure. Um, it's kind of funny, part of me kind of feels like maybe I could go less knowing that we already know we're probably a little uh, heavy on this cut, uh, but I think I'm still gonna leave it at default um, and we'll cut from there and then we'll assess it on the video to see maybe if I should have gone to a less. And that's it. This is the super simplest. Well, the bats are this simple too when I do the bats. Um, so I have to think about what fun thing I'll teach or we'll do different. Maybe I'll do uh, chunky, chunky glitter or something when I do the bats. Um, okay, so we're ready to go. Now we're going to talk about how to get the mat ready and how to get this, um, this Hobby Lobby thin cork ready to go, ready to cut onto the mat. All right, so let's get our cork ready. I've already cut two pieces of cork. Uh, if you looked at my uh, design space, it was gonna take me about three and a half inches wide uh, by, or three inches wide, I think by about three inches tall is about how much material I needed. So I've already cut a couple of my pieces of uh, faux cork. Uh, I do need to cut my heat and bond. Um, so for those of you that haven't seen heat and bond, I use the ultra hold. 
uh, and it does really well for me. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's kind of like one side kind of seems to me like a parchment paper uh, type feel to it. And then the other side has this uh, texture to it. So I need to just cut a piece of my heat and bond that's about the same size of my um, of my material. You don't want it to be bigger than your material because otherwise as you are uh, pressing it onto your material it does get on your mat and you can even I feel like see lines there uh, from you know past times when I did that. So I try to keep it pretty uh, close. I don't like to have too much without it because I would hate to have a cut and not have heat and bond on the back because that's what holds it together. So you kind of like you want to keep it as close as you possibly can. And then what I do is I put my cork down, good side facing down, and I just line this up with the texture side facing onto the back side of the cork. And I really make sure I have a good lineup in the upper left hand corner, right? Because my cut will be up here. And so I want to make sure I'm, I'm very nicely laid out in the upper part. Um, and this is actually I cut that really nicely because it's almost filling the whole thing. Uh, and then what you do is you want to press this with heat. You're going to press it onto your material. Now you only have to leave it on for a few seconds, you know, and, and with cork, you have to be really careful, I think, with heat and cork anyway. Um, and so I try not to leave uh, heat on too long. I use about 245 degrees um, is what I've come to like. And I'm just going to put my uh, Cricut Easy Press on here and then start my timer. Um, for about six seconds. Now you don't have to use an easy press. You can use an iron uh, in a really low heat and that works great. Um, I do love my Cricut Easy Press. I've got this one and then I also have my, ta-da, my mini. I love my mini. This is like, this was a Christmas gift that I got and I didn't actually use it for a few months. I wanted it so bad and I always went to this. Well, now when I'm making earrings, if I am putting heat transfer vinyl onto my earrings, I always use my easy press because my mini easy press because you can just be so specific on where you're putting it and I don't like to leave the indentions of the um, paper of the uh, tr uh, transfer sheet carrier the carrier paper and so that little one kind of helps me do that I'm letting this cool off because I need it to kind of cool off before I pull the paper off of it and so um, I've got to get to an edge it's kind of bad because it's hanging off the edge here um, but it's okay. I'm able to pull the backing off. I'm trying to see, see how you can see the shiny. The shiny is this heat and bond. You can even see, oh, it's not really hanging off. A tiny bit of it's kind of hanging off. Uh, but it's sitting back here. And right now, it just, you probably wouldn't, I mean, you would know it's there because you kind of feel it. But it's not doing anything. It's not sticky. What we need to do is put the other one on top of it. And so I do want to make sure that I have, I was doing it so they both, the lines go the same direction. So I'm going to put this on top of this one. Line those two pieces up nicely. And then put my easy press on here. Oh, again, you know what? I just remembered, ah! I didn't notice it until I started to do it. I never like to put my Easy Press right on material. Um, I always use parchment paper. Let me grab that really quick. Okay, I ripped off a little piece. I always keep parchment paper in the drawer right behind me. Um, and I ripped off a piece and I just never put the Easy Press directly on my material. All right, so I'm gonna leave my Easy Press on here for about six seconds. I still have it set at about 245 degrees. All right, and now I've got my two pieces. You can kind of see they're together. Now what I need to do though, is I need to let it cool. I don't wanna put this through my machine when the adhesive is hot. The good news is it cools really fast and by the time I have my mat ready, this thing is gonna be ready to go. So I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna get my mat pulled over and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get my mat ready because I'm doing uh, cutting faux leather today, cork. I'm just using my green mat. That's what I always use for any faux leather or cork projects. Um, I never put my, my material directly onto my mat. I always use some kind of uh, transfer paper. Right now what I'm using is this giant um, roll of transfer paper. I'll link to this below. I just use so much of this transfer paper that it gets expensive. And so I found this and it's very economical. I'm saving a ton of money and I was worried it wouldn't work because I'm a diehard Cricut person. Everything I do is try to stick to all the Cricut brand of everything. Um, obviously not my materials because I like to use lots of fun materials. Uh, but I'm funny with my tools and so I finally reached out and uh, got this and I'm really happy with it because A, I'm saving a lot of money. Now I do, you may have seen me say in my videos, I use a lot of the Cricut transfer tape, but I also sometimes use the Dollar Tree. I've got a bag of that over here too. Um, and for some uh, materials I use Dollar Tree transfer tape too. So it's all about doing it uh, in a good way that is also cost effective. So I now have this uh, transfer tape on here. And this, the reason I do this is when I cut, I want my debris to land on the transfer tape. It really saved, like I, you would not believe how many earrings I've cut on this mat. Look how pretty this is. <laughs> and there's some times when I used uh, deep cuts and so that you see those, you know, on here when I had a, a material that wasn't very thin, but I use a deeper cut. Um, but overall, my mat is just in really good shape because I do that. Now, I do sometimes hate putting cork uh, on my mats. When you pull cork up, sometimes it can be a little quirky. So I'm hoping today this will go okay. Um, but sometimes it wants to stick or I just have to be really, just have to be really careful when you're pulling cork up from your mat. So I've got my cork on my mat. I'm going to do what I always do, but I'm not going to go crazy. And that's, I always use my brayer. Got to make sure your materials on your adhesive really nicely. This particular earring does have the cuts of the mouth and the nose. And um, you want to make sure when it's doing those cuts within the pieces that it's not pulling your material off of the mat. And that's what making sure that contact paper really keeps it sticky. Like I said, I've cut hundreds of earrings on this mat. That contact paper is what... Uh, it's all fresh adhesive and so it keeps it stuck and the brayer really pushes down on it. So now that I've done that, I mean really my mat's ready to go and I can cut out my school earrings. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am doing a Halloween DIY video series. Uh, I have made so many fun Halloween uh, earrings. I just can't wait for you to see all of them. Uh, some of them are super easy, like these skulls are easy. I've got some easy bats. Uh, if you're just getting started, these are perfect earrings for you. I do have some where I'm doing uh, using HTV, just because it lets me get more intricate with some different things. One of them will say boo on them. Um, the ones I haven't made but that are on my list are the candy corns. I've been wanting to do candy corns uh, for, I think, two Halloweens now. So uh, I'm really excited to try to make those this year. But first, I'm going to do the ones I've already made because I've made a ton of earrings. Um, and I'm hoping to just release maybe two of those a week uh, so that you can just get really excited about doing some earrings for this Halloween. For those of you new to the channel, welcome. If you like DIY, if you like DIY earrings, um, seasonal DIY, party DIY, Dollar Tree DIY, I do all that kind of thing here on this channel. I do a lot of earrings, so uh, if you don't, if you're not interested in that, you can just skip that video and wait for the next one that's not about my fun uh, leather and faux leather uh, earrings. For those of you who are coming back, thank you so much. I love seeing your visits and I love seeing your comments, um, and I'm just so glad that you watch my channel. Okay, so what I always say here is don't push that button, even though it's blinking at you. We want to make sure this cut went through. Although I would just have no doubt like that this had to have gone through because I think it was too thick of a um, too thick of a cut, not too thin of a cut. But let's see here. This is interesting because my um, my contact paper didn't even stick. That just could be the cork is so sticky. This had to have gone through. But I'm going to be careful. I'm going to be safe. And I'm just going to push my C button again. Um, and when I do that, it repeats the cut. 
Um, if I would have ejected it by pushing that arrow button, I never could have done it. Um, it's the, probably the most regrettable mistake I make is I eject it without checking and then the cut didn't go through and then I'm trimming the heck out of the earring because it went through somewhat, just not all the way and I'm trying to fix it. So I am trying to do a much better job, it's over the past six months, of just checking my cut before I object, object it, eject it. And if I'm not sure it went through, I just push that button again. All it's going to do is send it through another pass that's in the exact same location so it doesn't hurt anything um, in my opinion is kind of better uh, to be safe than sorry um, I will say though when I work with cork uh, I have to be really careful I'll probably use my spatula uh, to get it off of the mat um, I do like to flip my mat upside down when I'm taking off cork because you don't want to peel the cork up. You don't want to do this. You're better almost to turn it upside down and to peel the mat up. Um, and so we'll do that today. It'll probably be a little bit easier just because it looks like the, um, the plastic is really the plastic. The transfer tape is really sticking um, to the cork. And so if that's the case, uh, probably our biggest challenge will be to pull the, um, the cork off. All right, so let's see what we've got here. I, before I, I just first want to see if this plastic comes up. Uh, it looks like we'll just pull it up a lot easier. Okay, so we got the plastic off. Now what we've got to do, I keep calling it plastic, sorry, transfer tape. Now what we need to do is we need to get this transfer tape off of my cork. And we want to do that without damaging the cork, right? We don't want to pull off. It's very thin. You saw how thin it is. We don't want to pull it off. So I'm just going to very carefully pull this transfer tape off. So far, so good. Just, we don't want to, and just so you know what I'm seeing, I don't think you can see this yet, but it's pulling off, and but it's sticking on the skull, which I find really interesting. That's okay. It looks like it cut through, which is good, because remember, this is the back side. Um, I don't really need to be pulling it off the part that didn't cut, but that's okay. Uh, we're just going to get this tape off, because it just helps us... And, okay, so they cut beautifully. Here's the, here's what it came from. So that's good. Now we just need to get the uh, tape off of our skeletons. So it's kind of trying to find the edge. It's not any different than anything else that has a sticky where you're trying to find the edge, which I did. And we just need to pull that off. And again, very carefully because you don't want to damage the earring. This is so pretty. I mean, I just, uh, the eyes are popping out as I try to pull the, pull the thing off. We get to the nose, it's gonna pull that nose. It wanted to take the nose off, but it didn't. We're gonna have to poke the nose out real quick. Here he comes. The nose just came right out, no big deal. Um, here's our, here's our skull. Super cute, it was such a good cut. It really made such a pretty cut. I love this cork. It is just so awesome. I have it. This is kind of one of the more intricate cuts. I've done them a lot for, uh, what do you call, the big circle cut earrings. I've made a lot of circle cut earrings with them. And I've done ear, I've done uh, teardrop earrings with them. What I haven't done a lot with this material, um, you know, I've always made it double-sided. I've never cut it without making it double-sided. I worry that it's so thin, I'm just not sure how it would cut. Um but I haven't cut a lot of intricate things, so this is good. And this, honestly, I don't feel like it cut this good the first time because I feel like I had to come in and kind of trim that bottom, and I did not have to trim that bottom at all. I mean, look how pretty that cut is. It is just, that is so awesome. Now, I don't know if you saw the price on this cork. And look, by the way, I cut this way too big, so I can make me some bar earrings or something out of that. Okay, so I'm going to use this green mat only because we can see a lot better uh, when it's on the green mat. 
And we're gonna just finish these up really simple because you can see here what I used is the ball wire hooks. I love ball wire hooks. I also use regular uh, hooks as well um, on a lot of things. Uh, but ball wire hooks are nice because you don't need a lot of tools. Uh, I love the look of them and they're just super, super fast to use and make. So we're gonna use our hole puncher. I have two hole punchers that I always use that you guys will always see me use. I got this one, which is my super tiny one where the biggest hole on here is two uh, millimeters. And so I'm using this when I want little holes. I use this all the time. Um, and then I have this one when I want to use bigger holes. I think maybe in this one, maybe I'll go with my little, it's pretty thin. Uh, so maybe I'll go with my smaller one. Um, right now it's set to the biggest hole. So that's a 2mm, which would be the same I'd use on my other one. I'm going to actually turn it down a notch. I can just turn this and I'm going to turn it down just a little bit, make the, the hole just a little bit smaller. And one of the things I really like about this uh, pattern is it does give you a place to punch this hole um, in the top. And I just really like that because um, it's not actually punching in the head, it's in a hole um, above the head. And so I just like it that it doesn't stick your, your hook down low like that. I think that makes a big difference. Now I'll link to the ball wire hooks. Uh, people always ask me uh, where you get them. Um, it's, you kind of get what you pay for. So you're going to see some cheaper ones linked. Um, you know, some of the cheaper ones may turn colors. Uh, I like 18, the 18 K, uh, 18 carat uh, covered. Uh, they're less likely to turn colors on you. So you'll see some different ones. I mean, you can get these ball wire hooks. You can get them in any kind, um, of color and any kind of quality. Uh, you just know, like, as you're looking, that's what you want to compare. I have a lot of cheap ones, too, uh, that I've done for different things. But if I'm trying to make something that I uh, want to sell, uh, I wouldn't use my the cheaper ones. I might use them if I'm doing a fun thing for the kids or something for a party. Um, and voila, here we go. Um, let me put these on a card so you can see these better. All right, there we go. There's our skull earrings. Again, you can make these any size. If you wanted them a little bit bigger, you could do that, or you could even make them just a little bit smaller. Uh, just as a reminder, I just thought I'd show you all the fun designs and patterns that you can do with these fun skull earrings. They do not just need to be for Halloween. They do not just need to be black leather, about black faux leather or black cork they can be all these fun patterns uh, so even if you want to kind of celebrate the fun month of november and just kind of do some fun skeleton uh, skull earrings but maybe do it in kind of a more festive pattern there are so many great options out there for you so again i will link to all of these really cute uh, skull earrings uh, down in the comments. I'll link them to the details and in the comments. I'll also uh, link over to my website posting too, where I actually have the pictures of these if you wanna actually look further at the pictures uh, to see which materials I'm talking about. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned, like I said, I have more Halloween videos to come. Um, if you liked anything, please take a second and click that like button. If you wanna uh, see more, click the subscribe and tap that bell button so you can get notifications. Thanks everyone. Bye.